Hi, and welcome back to this, the 23rd episode of modifying, upgrading, scraping, repairing this uh, Sieg 7x12 mini lathe. As you can see, I've got a bit of rust forming on the uh, housing, so I guess I need to put some oil on this part. The other part looks good. Now in the last episode, I'd been working on wiring up the control cabinets. I've pretty much finished the power wiring, but I need to get the computer working to be able to test other functions as I put things together. Well, thanks for the feedback we got on that last video. I really appreciate that. Here was me thinking I was being a little bit uh, of a butcher, the way I hacked into this uh, the old housing with, with a hacksaw. But it turns out I'm not even close to being as brutal as you guys because most of the suggestions in the comment section were, were along the lines of either smack it with a hammer or put it in a vise and use it like a nutcracker so yep you guys certainly are butchers good on you this is now the 19 volt power supply as you can see I've just uh, wired in an extra tap off the off the output so that I can run that to that little pulse width modulation board printed up a 3D printed housing for it. The, the housing design, I got a just a generic DIN rail artwork off the Thingiverse, that's this end, and then just in on shape, I just added the, uh, the rest to it. Wait a minute. Looks like I messed up the offsets here. Oh yes. Have to mount this upside down or reprint it. This is now the second attempt at printing that uh, cover. Let's see if it fits. Remember last week I pointed out that this is a pretty primitive power supply with like a transformer and I'm, I was surprised they didn't use a switching power supply. Well, I really shouldn't talk when I know nothing about something because uh, a couple of knowledgeable gentlemen of course pointed out that well this is a, a switching power supply and yes switching power supplies do still have transformers in them. So sorry about that, I'll, I'll shut up about things I don't know about. At least I'll try to. Try not to talk too much about electronics since I really don't know squat about it. I downloaded a bootable image of uh, Linux CNC, including both Linux and the real time kernel as well. From there, I then used the program Rufus to burn a bootable USB stick. Now that I've got the power supply for the um, computer connected up. Let's turn it on and see what's on it. The PC's currently got um, Windows installed and it does work. I've got a bootable USB stick installed but it didn't boot from USB. So I'm guess I'm going to have to go looking in the BIOS as to how to make this thing boot from USB. I just checked the manual and I need to hit the delete key during post to enter this computer's BIOS. So let's try that. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's see, boot. Boot priorities, we have it's booting from the hard drive. Well, I guess we need to change that. Let's make it boot from 
the wafer one first and see if that works. Oh, well, that looks good. Guess we'll try the graphical Debian installer. I got a feeling I've been here before and it gets stuck when it tries to detect and mount the CD-ROM and of course I have no CD-ROM player. And let's see. I got a feeling that this is where I failed about six months ago trying to set up this thing. Failed to copy from the CD-ROM. There is no CD-ROM drive. Well, I've now tried uh, two different distributions of Linux to try and get this get it installed on this hard drive, but I keep encountering the same problem. I think what I'll do is I'll pull the hard drive out of this computer, connect it to the PC which powers the Maho, load Mint with um, preamp and Linux CNC onto it on that other PC and then switch it back into this computer. See if that works. On the Maho I just use an old SD card from photography and a cheap SD card adapter as kind of a poor man's solid state hard drive. Um, Linux CNC takes so little space that even an old 8 gig card's plenty for, for this. I think the new computer's got a 750 gig hard drive in it. Probably never been more than about, I don't know, yeah, maybe 1% full or so. So those are the two connectors, power and SATA. I'll connect them up to that hard drive. Well, it's now another day. I've got a, a new distribution of Linux to install. This is now um, uh, Mint. But in the meantime, I've also noticed that the BIOS is not holding its settings when you shut it down. So I checked the BIOS battery, it's completely dead. So I need to basically solder in a new, or solder leads onto a new battery and install that. I'll just check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure this is dead. 0.2 of a volt, it's dead. These are just stuck down with some double-sided tape, so I'll rip that off and stick the new one down with a bit of uh, um, hot glue. Once I managed to get Linux um, installed on this computer, I was still having a lot of problems with it locking up. And it turned out to be I needed to disable all three of these, virtualization, EIST, and the C-State report. And once I disabled all of those, then the system seems to be running quite stably. My wife calls this an art installation. I used her Ethernet cable to install Linux CNC. I still need to install the UMTS stick, which I have, to allow wireless internet, and then I'll be able to 
move this back down into the basement. I do need to still go into the settings of Linux and set it so that it automatically boots, no password, and boots straight into Linux CNC. The distribution I used is Mint. I'm not quite sure why it's showing a, a Debian background when it probably should be showing Mint, but oh well. Another thing to look at later. In the CNC menu there's this latency test. I ran that for about four hours yesterday. This computer doesn't have fantastic latency, but should be good enough with a um, Mesa card doing all the heavy lifting. So. One weird thing is that this uh, distribution doesn't have any form of task menu or so. I can start programs by right-clicking and going down into the Applications menu, and I'm sure I could probably use a terminal window to give, it a, give the machine a shutdown command but I haven't actually seen any obvious way of telling it to shut down. It also includes this weird, um, I think they call it panels. Um, not really sure what I'm supposed to be using this for. I guess you put your most used programs or something in there. I can't say I'm ever going to need it. I'll just be using a direct boot into um, Linux CNC. Basically the plan's going to be to use Pi because I really like it. And it'll be a GMockerPy lathe interface, I'd say. Sorry, right, one, two, three is the generic code to get into GMockerPy. I'll be using it full screen, like this. Yeah, now i just got a whole bunch of configuration work to do. I also still need to configure the touch screen. I think I need to download a program for that according to the SunFounder, which is the, which is the display, according to their website. So at the moment, the touch screen's not doing anything. The touch screen does have a bit of a weird color cast to it. Black is not black, it's more sort of a dark red sort of color, but oh well, it's good enough. You can see, it's good, you can see it. At this point, I'm going to sign off for this week and say thanks for watching. Sorry it wasn't such a great video. I'm yeah, a bit limited this week by wasting three days trying to get that PC up and going. Hopefully next week's video will be better. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.